Greetings and welcome to this recording of statics for mechanical engineering technologists. This is a lecture regarding resultants. We will have other videos that show free body diagrams and examples. This recording is copyright Jeffrey Burt and Perimeter Design Incorporated, all rights reserved. We've had a few lectures already regarding forces and components, but let's review things for a moment. We need to know how to find resultants using the method of components, but first we need some forces to give us some components. So if I lay out a force like this, and I call it A, I can find the components of that force by projecting a force down onto the positive x-axis like this and I call that AX and likewise I can do the same thing to the y-axis and I'll call this AY. Now in order to create a resultant I'll need another force so I'll lay out a force like this, called it B. B will also have a projected force BX, and a projected force BY. These are the components of force B. So the first thing I did is break the forces into components. And this is, of course, the graphical method. We'll get into the algebraic method in just a moment. So now I have components of a force, and I need to add these collinear components, the x's together. These are collinear along the same line. And the y's together separately to create the components of our resultant. If I tack the BX onto the end of AX, I simply add these two together, I'll get a new force called RX, and I can do the same thing with BY here. I'm just going to, that's how it's a negative. So it's going in the same direction as our original BY. So I'm adding them tip to tail or tail to tip. So our new forces that we created might look a little bit like this. So here's our X and R, Y. Going from the origin here all the way up to the very end of where we added the AX and the BX. Same thing here, from the origin to where the AY and the BY ended up. So I'll rewrite those. So here's R, Y. Here's Rx. And they will come together and make a new force called R. So now how do we find the resultant magnitude and direction? Well, we use the Pythagorean theorem with Ry and Rx, or in this case we used a uh, graphical method. So I like using the graphical method on paper or on the screen to get a good idea of what we are looking for. So if we really did have an A and a B, say that were uh, 8 newtons and 6 newtons, and they were at, say, 
62 degrees and at negative 48 degrees we might expect to have a resultant that is maybe this size something like that and at an angle called in this case theta r that's probably relatively low but in the first quadrant so let's try that out now let's use our formulas our key equations and formulas and plug in some of these numbers so instead of f we're going to use a and b so a in the x direction equals a times the cosine of theta a and that gets us 8 newtons times the cosine of 62 degrees 3.76 newtons likewise bx equals 6 newtons times the cosine of 48 degrees and we get 4.01 newtons okay so for the y's we're going to use the force and multiply it by the sine of the angle now notice how I'm using the angles here the cosine instead of these ones these are for the slopes and we'll use those eventually um, but also these angles are always with respect to the positive x-axis keeping everything consistent so if you had got an angle that was not with respect to the positive x-axis it's just best to change it right away so everything's consistent as possible so a y is going to be eight newtons times the sine of 62 degrees and we end up with 7.06 newtons and by equals 6 newtons times the sine of negative 48 degrees and that yields negative 4.46 newtons okay so here we have used our formulas to calculate the components of the forces so here we're going to use these formulas to find out what the components of the resultant are so our x equals ax plus bx and we've got 3.76 newtons plus 4.01 newtons that equals 7.77 .77 newtons the y's we have 7.06 newtons plus a negative 4.46 newtons and that yields 2.6 newtons now to reconstitute our resultant values into the magnitude of the resultant here we're going to put them into this equation here which is a statement of the Pythagorean theorem so I'll do that up here because I have space so our resultant 
equals square root of 7.77 newtons squared plus 2.6 newtons squared and that yields 8.2 newtons. Last but not least we need to find the angle of this resultant force. In order to do that, to find the angle of any force, we take the inverse tangent of its y component over its x component. So if Ry is 2.60 newtons and our x is 7.77 newtons the newtons cancel out and we are left with 18.5 degrees and here is our answer We've got R is 8.2 newtons at 18.5 degrees. Now, the rest of this formula here is dealing with the fact that your calculator assumes that if you have a negative value in this expression, then it must be that the angle is in the fourth quadrant. It doesn't necessarily know. It simply assumes it's always in the fourth quadrant. But if you end up with a resultant that is in the second or third quadrant, it won't know that. It will simply assume it's in the fourth quadrant. So you'll have to figure out whether it's in the second or third quadrant by using this. If it is in the second or third quadrant, all you have to do is add 180 degrees. That concludes this part of the lecture, which is kind of a review, and I hope this helps.